Hello everyone and happy Thursday and welcome to the long-awaited, highly anticipated haul for my garage sale. So I am going to be having a garage sale tomorrow, which is the day that you're seeing this. So when you're watching this, my first day in my garage sale is probably done. And then I'm going to be having the garage sale also on Saturday. I was originally going to do a Wednesday to Saturday garage sale, but with how life has been recently, how busy it's been, it's been it's been wild. For the premiere squad, I know you guys feel like totally left in the dust, but guys, uh, if I could tell you all the stuff that's happened this month, it's crazy. We've hosted like multiple, multiple people that Ryan knows from Iowa for multiple, multiple days each. Some had babies, some had spouses. We've been cleaning the house. We showed a bunch of my family members the house for the first time. We had kind of this like gathering that happened with some friends and family a couple days ago. It's just been wild. So we just haven't had time for premieres and I just didn't have time to have the garage sale on Wednesday. I needed to use Wednesday to prepare for the garage sale because that's actually when I'm filming this and it is almost night and I'm just now finishing getting ready for this freaking garage sale. So <laughs> I'm having the garage sale on Thursday and on Saturday. My aunt stopped by to give me some supplies, to borrow me some tables, to actually give me a couple Love Your Melon hats to sell too. And she let me know that if you were gonna take a day off from a garage sale, actually shockingly Friday is the best day to do because if you're open on Thursday, the weekday people will show up. And then on Saturday, you definitely wanna be open so that the people who work full-time jobs can also have a chance to show up. And I, again, similar theme here, I just have a lot to do and I just don't think I can be open for three days, let alone the four I originally planned. So I'm gonna be doing it Thursday and Saturday to give myself a little break in between. Friday also might have rain, so it all just works out that way. So today, we're gonna go over the stuff that I am selling. And for the garage sale, I do have a lot of clothing. I have a lot of miscellaneous and stuff. And I have a lot of holiday decor. I have plushies, I have pillows, I have rugs, I have tons of stuff, electronics. I have been gathering stuff for, I would say about three months. The past three months, really, really honing in on gathering stuff for the garage sale. And it's finally all coming to a head. And I have promised you guys in many halls that I would finally show you guys these stuff in its own designated garage so hall. So that is today's video. We're going to go out into the garage where I have everything right now kind of sorted out. We're going to quickly show you this stuff. I'm probably not going to show you every single like specific thing with its specific price just because it's probably not that big of a deal. I just want you guys to get an idea of what I have been picking up for the garage sale. So for the garage sale, Debbie, my mother, is going to be coming over and she is also going to be adding some of her stuff to it. I told Ryan that he could put some stuff in it, but He's been just as busy as me. So I don't think he has anything to put in it, which is totally fine. Just offered it to him. He has not been saving stuff up like I have. And quick, before we jump into the actual haul, this is going to be a three-part series. So if you're new here just for this video or you've missed me mentioning it in the past couple of videos over the past few weeks, this is a three-part series of the garage sale. This first part is the haul and just kind of like the intro to the garage sale, talking about kind of my plan like we're doing right now, kicking off the garage sale with mainly the haul. Part two is going to be next Tuesday and that's going to be a vlog of the actual happening and occurrence and follow through and play through of the garage sale. I'm gonna do updates every couple hours. I'm gonna show you maybe some of Debbie's stuff. I'm gonna tell you what's selling really well right away. I got some water to put in the garage sale, like water bottles. I'm gonna tell you if like I need to go get more because that's doing so good because it's gonna be freaking 90 degrees. So I'm just gonna be doing a vlog of the two days of the garage sale, which will go up next Tuesday. And then finally, in a week from today, I'm going to be doing a breakdown and review and conclusion and would I do this again and did it go well and what sold the best and really just like wrap it up and have a sit down little chit chat with you guys about if I think it's a good idea for you to do a bins fine garage sale, how much work it was, was it worth it, did I make much money, all that kinds of good stuff. So we're gonna jump into the haul in a second. I am gonna meet you back here after the haul to actually talk about how much I spent on this stuff. I did the analytics, I did the numbers, I broke it down by category and even by clothing size. And we're gonna break down how much I spent and how much I am invested into this garage sale. And then I'm gonna let you guys go and I'm gonna go run my garage sale. <laughs> so I will see you guys back here 
after the haul. Alrighty, everyone. Well, welcome to the garage where the magic is going to happen. I'm gonna do a little bit of some kind of haul for you guys right now. I have not been able to figure out the perfect way to do this, and I'm starting to think there is no perfect way to do this. I cannot bring all these items into our filming room and literally show you every single thing one by one. So I'm thinking that I'm going to give you a quick rundown of the clothing, and then I'm gonna show you kind of where I have some stuff, talk about some pricing on some stuff, and then maybe show you a few things here and there. We're kind of gonna wing this. There's just literally no perfect way to do this with how much stuff there is but I do have all the numbers broken down. And after this little haul situation, we're gonna go through the numbers and how much I spent on each category, break it down, break it down by sizes of clothing, break it down by weight, break it down by amount of pieces. I really did all the math. Since I can't really do a perfect one by one haul of each item, I did do some good math and some good numbers for you because that's what I do know how to do is some numbers. So after we're done with this version of a haul. We're gonna cut back into the room and into what like the filming that you just saw and we're gonna talk numbers. So let's start looking at some of the clothes and some of the stuff and obviously you'll get a better look at my stuff and just more info on Tuesday when we have the vlog of the actual garage sale. I think that the best information may be coming in the second video in the series, which is the garage sale vlog, and the third part of the series in a week from now, which is going to be the how it all went, the after results of the numbers, the profit. So definitely stay tuned, definitely subscribe so you don't miss out on the other two parts of this. This is just part one, and let's dive into some of this stuff and talk about what we have for sale and how much we have of some of this stuff. First up, on the left side of our garage, I, well, don't mind Ryan's art from his classroom. <laughs> I do have the clothing on a two-tiered clothing rack. Thank you to my aunt for stopping by and giving me this to use. Ryan and I don't have any clothing racks anymore because since the apartment, we don't need them anymore. But for this, it will come very much so in handy. So I have this split out by sizes right now, and I have a pretty fair split of sizing, including extra smalls over here. We have small all throughout this middle section. This is actually a mix of small and medium coats or dresses because they couldn't fit with this double tier system. So I had to put them on this end side. And down here, we have the actual medium clothing. Over here, I have the large clothing. And then over here, we have XL and up for clothing. Let's take a peek at what I actually have then. So all of the clothes, all of it, 100% is from the bins. If you're new to the channel just for this video for some reason, the bins are the Goodwill outlet. And what you do is well, you pay by the pound and you shop by bins, literally bins of excess from Goodwill, excess donations, things that they've had in the store too long, all the stuff that Goodwill is either done with or doesn't want goes there and you shop in these giant containers and you pay by the pound. And that is where I got nearly every single thing in my entire garage sale but especially all of the clothing is 100% from the bins. So again, I will break down the numbers in a second when we get back to the room, but let's just take a peek kind of at what kind of stuff I picked up. So I've picked up stuff over the past, I'd say two or three months and a variety of things and brands and types of clothing. Obviously as a garage sale, I don't want to have only clothing because this is not like a consignment store or something like that. And honestly, people go to garage sales for the stuff and the miscellaneous and the hard goods most of all, I feel. So I wanted to get a lot of clothes, but still not have it be overwhelming and be way too much. In the extra small section, I have some American Eagle. I have a couple American Eagle pieces. I think this is also American Eagle. And then just some kind of random brands, but they're very summery items. And as you can see, I did attach the price by a little plastic tab and a note card with a price on it. This ended up being the easiest way to do this. I do have little stick dots or circles that I used to price everything else, but it was not sticking to the clothes. I would have loved to not have to use the plastic barbs, but it just ended up working out best, especially for not having people switch up pricing and having it actually stay on throughout the actual 
two days of the sale. Then in the smalls, I actually do have a swimsuit in the smalls. I do have a few other pieces of swimsuits and bras, but those are going to be on a table of accessories. Otherwise, kind of the same type of stuff, just some blouses and summery type items. I did try to pick up a lot of local Minnesota team and just Minnesota themed clothing, basically any I could find. And you'll notice as I go through this that those are the things I marked up quite a bit. Also, I tried to pick them up when they were in super good shape and quite substantial, like this hoodie from Adidas. Otherwise, more American Eagle, a lot of mall brands. We have Express, Banana Republic. Ever Eve is really popular around here, so I did pick up that. Mainly, it's a lot of summer stuff, as you'll see, and also you'll notice that almost everything is priced at two or three dollars. The only items that I kind of strayed from that price with was with the local Minnesota pieces and some of the just slightly more substantial like coats or jackets like this Patagonia. If this Patagonia was not branded on the sleeve, I would have marked it up a lot more and I also probably wouldn't have even put it in the garage sale. I probably would have done almost like 15 if it had no brand on it. But again, I probably wouldn't even put it in the garage sale if not. So then in the dresses and the coats, I have this Orvis. This is another item I just marked up a little bit more because it's nicer and it's a long coat. And then the dresses are also just kind of like two and three dollars. These items cost me like probably almost 75 cents a piece. Almost everything I got for the garage sale is this like polyester or viscose material where it cost me like nothing. That's why I'm so okay with pricing them at like two or three. Also, of course, it's a garage sale. So you cannot expect like online resale prices for the stuff. Then on the bottom is where we have the mediums. And this is a North Face piece, which is why that got marked up a little bit higher. Then we just kind of had the same type of stuff. Mall brands, American Eagle, some teen kind of stuff like American Eagle, and then some more adult type of stuff. I also picked up a ton of these American Eagle flannels. I guess in the mediums, I have like four of them. These just seem to be really popular for American Eagle. So I grabbed a bunch of those. And then of course, just like classic Classic graphic tees usually do good with everybody. This is a Target piece, but it's new with tags and it's super cute and trendy. So I did stray away from all brands for a few things kind of like that. We have another local Minnesota Wild piece and they are our hockey team. This is another hoodie, so I marked that up a little. And then this is a Talbot's coat, so that got marked up to five. I'm not gonna pull the large or extra large plus sizes off of the wall here. I actually have another bar that I'm going to put between trees, almost like a coat rack during the sale. And that's where those will be. So for right now, they're on the wall. But I guarantee you these are all about the same things. This is the only maybe different thing. It's an Under Armour piece that I marked at five just because it's in really good shape. And it's more like a jacket or like a sweatshirt. So I marked it up just a little bit more. And then we have a few other local Minnesota things mixed in here as well, including this brand called Soda. It's a local kind of like boutique. Tiki, Minnesota owned, Minnesota clothing brand. I have a few pieces by them. Those I marked up just a little bit higher too, just because they're quite expensive from the boutiques they're sold at and they don't really go on sale. And they're really, really popular. Like even if you put those in marketplace, you can get a good amount for them. So those I marked up a little bit higher too. Down here is where we have some of the bottoms and pants. I really tried to pick once again, like local type stuff. This is some Minnesota wild pants. And then and I have some Spanx and some leggings. I really tried to focus on leggings like Athleta. There's a couple pair. I have some Lulu if I had any. And then Under Armour. I just feel like leggings are kind of popular all around with all ages. You can't always expect a ton from leggings. So I thought it was a good fit to put them in here. Also, they weigh so little at the bins that once again, they didn't really cost me very much. So down here under the clothing in the garage for right now, I have a bag of accessories, which is like hats, bras, and some separate swim pieces. And then I did get a few shoes out from my inventory that just weren't doing super well that I thought could maybe do good. So I'm gonna kind of like quickly go through a few of these just to show you them and maybe explain why I picked them. So in the hats and accessories, there's about a million of Love Your Melons. Now, if you've never heard of Love Your Melon, it's knit beanies and they actually are made in Minnesota. I think it was some girl that went to college at one of our bigger colleges created them and it's become this huge company and it's very popular in more Midwest, Northern 
different states just because they make so many different colors and they're super comfortable and stuff. So throughout the past couple months, I've been grabbing like any from the bins that I can find. And then actually my aunt who brought the clothing rack also handed some over for the sale, but I have some saved up as well. I also just have a few winter hats that are either Minnesota themed again, like the Minnesota Vikings, which is our football team or like spider. We have North Face, I have a Michael Kors, just any that were kind of slightly substantial or slightly had a name brand, I grabbed them because of course the cost is like nothing. So it's worth picking up in my opinion. We got a Love Your Melon little knit hat. A Love Your Melon like cap. We have another Minnesota Vikings hat. This is the type of stuff I was really, really gravitating towards. Another North Face hat. Also Minnesota has like a million months of winter. So having a bunch of winter hats is a good idea for the garage sale, I feel like. I did pull a bunch of the bras that I have in my closet that I'm actually just gonna put in like a bin and probably put a dollar on. I don't have the most luck with bras and a lot of these I've had for a long time now. So I am just gonna try to get rid of them and make a little money because those also cost like nothing at all. Another thing that I grabbed a lot of when I was at the bins over the past couple months was just like new with tags, little things and little accessories. So we have this like Disney girls pair of gloves. These are probably also gonna be in like the dollar bin. I actually have a Wisconsin themed Disney themed love your melon hat that I marked up like a dollar higher than the rest but more just like new with tags little things a lot of socks so these are like boot socks from American Eagle and I put those at two bucks because they say 13 on them we're gonna give it a shot since they're new and everyone likes to find new from a pre-owned place. These are just some like yoga socks. We got a couple more hats, including some kids ones like Pokemon. Kids love Pokemon. I also love Pokemon. Adidas originals, any that were in like good shape. I grabbed, we have our Minnesota University College and then another Pokemon hat. And then I have just a few bags. A few are from my inventory, but they were also bins finds. And then there's a few that I grabbed for the sale. So this coach hasn't been doing too good for me. And I think it's good to have like a couple items that are like more name brand. I priced it at eight bucks because these type of things are really popular right now. This is a Karl Lagerfeld bag that I tried to consign a bunch of times and they never took. So I was like, well, let me just put it in the sale. We have a Nanette Lapour. It's like new without tags. So this I got for the sale specifically, four bucks, whatever. At least I can have a few bags. And last in this accessories bag would be this Michael Kors. I despise selling Michael Kors online myself, but I think it's a great thing for a garage sale. So 10 bucks, it's in really, really good shape. It's just missing the like MK dongle. But otherwise, I think this is a good solid garage sale piece. So I'm gonna put these back in here and then we'll look at some of the shoes. Shoes wise, I feel like I have a lot of boots for this sale, which is honestly totally fine with me because we will be going into fall in about two months here, which in Minnesota, we actually do get a fall. So there's a lot of boot wearers here. And that's why also having the knit beanies and maybe some hoodies and stuff doesn't scare me, even though it's gonna be 90 degrees during the sale. But these were the brand Song. I had these in my closet for a while. They weren't doing good. I put eight bucks on them because they're like brand new. This is also my first time having a garage sale. So if you're looking at my prices and either they're crazy low, crazy high, I'm, I'm just winging it. I didn't look up garage sales. I didn't even do any like comp checking. I haven't been to anyone else's garage sales. This is just kind of like what I came up with in my head as like fair, lower garage sale prices. Some Cole Haan sandals, five bucks from the bins, some Timberlands. These were doing really bad on my Poshmark, but this is a popular brand around here. So I put eight on these, cause once again, they're in really good shape and they're really cute. Banana Republic heels in basically any category. I stuck with some mall brand type stuff cause that's just what does good with like just average everyday people in suburbia, I guess. So Banana Republic, those were three bucks, I don't know. These are some Sam Edelmans I've had for like over a year. They're really cute, but if someone will take them for 10, that's fine with me. They retailed for like 168, so I feel like 10 is not that crazy to ask for. These J Crews, I've tried to consign, but they're just not in good enough shape to consign. So I threw $3 onto these because I just kind of want to get them out of here, even if I don't make too much. Sardo Franco Sardo, these are like almost brand new but I put five bucks on them. Another bin's fine. I think all my shoes are also from the bins. 
More Sardo, Franco Sardo, five bucks. I'm in my garage with the garage door open. So if I'm like looking around, like I'm being like really sketchy, it's because I really don't want like an audience. And luckily, so far nobody's went by, but I keep thinking someone's gonna go by. So these are some Dolce Vita boots, really cute. And I would love if these would sell for me, but they're just not doing that great. So I put eight bucks on them. Again, good shape, really cute style. I just feel like eight isn't that crazy to ask for. These are more Sam Edelman. These are like rain boots. I put 10 on these because I think these have been worn like once or twice. And again, Sam Edelman's are very expensive retail. Super, super popular brand around here. This is Sorel boots. These I got from the bins not super long ago. These are not doing very good for me. So I put 10 bucks on these. And we're gonna see how those do. I think that those will do really good even for 10. And my last pair is this pair of Clarks. Now there might be more shoes at my garage sale because if you haven't heard me talk about it in the past few videos, I'm letting my fiance Ryan throw some stuff in, which I don't think he has very much. But then I'm also going to basically run it with my mom who kind of resells part-time. So she does have some stuff she's gonna put in from her like Poshmark closet. And her stuff might be cheaper or totally different brands or something. I don't really know what she's gonna bring. I just said like, bring whatever you want. So I put eight bucks on these Clarks. Now I'm gonna put all these back in the bag. And I think we're gonna kind of move on to showing you more of the like actual things and the stuff that I'm gonna have in the garage sale, which is like the meat and potatoes because like I said, I feel like people go to garage sales more for the hard goods, the decor, the collectibles, the furniture. So that's the stuff that I've been buying more like specifically for the garage sale. So I'm gonna put these away and I'll see you in a sec. Really quick, I did actually find these at the bins and got a great price on them. So I'm pricing them $3 a piece or two for five, and these are really, really nice wine stoppers that are like monogrammed. They're all new with tags, and somebody who must have owned a boutique donated them all at the same time. Clearly there's not a lot of N's, F's, or E's out there in the world, even though I would have guessed the opposite, honestly, especially for E, I feel like. But I got this whole basket for, I think, $2. So even if these sell for three bucks a piece or two for five, I'm gonna make my money back instantly. Um, these are from like Mud Pie, which is either sold at boutiques or I think Eve, or it's sold at Von Mar, which is like a department store, kind of like Macy's. And I think these retailed, I took the original price stickers off. I think, of some of them at least. And I think they were originally almost like 20 bucks a piece, which is ridiculous, but yeah, I think three bucks a piece or two for five is not that bad. Quickly, before we get into the things, there's one more little section of clothing and that's this tub. And that is a tub of baby and kids clothing. So of course, a lot of people go to garage sales for baby and kids clothes. And also of course, at the bins, there is a lot of baby clothing. So over time, I have saved up a ton, as you can see. I will tell you the actual weight of this tub of clothes and how much I spent on it once we get to the last part of this video. But all of this is like, decently name brand baby clothes. I didn't just pick up like whatever I found. This is Bowden. We've got some baby Nike in here. We've got some Hannah Anderson. We have a lot of little baby Ralph Lauren and then some like very kind of niche, nice baby clothes. So I'm really hoping that I can sell this stuff pretty easily. I'm also gonna put this on the table and do $3 a piece or two for five, which three bucks a piece for baby clothes is probably a lot to ask, which which I do know, but I'm hoping people buy two for five for the most part. Also, of course, people can barter. And also, like I said, this is like all kind of name brand, which I don't know if people are gonna know their baby name brands. Maybe they will, I don't know. If the first day I'm not selling like any of it, I will just do like two bucks a piece or like two for three or something if the first price isn't working out. So we will see on that. Last up is the miscellaneous and hard goods and stuff. And like I said, for the most part, this is stuff that I actually purchased for the garage sale. Oh, there's one more bag I'm gonna have to go grab. There's maybe more than I'm showing you. This is just kind of the stuff that I could find really quick. The garage is very 
disorganized right now, but I have a bag of plush and pillows. I have a bag of holiday because of course the garage sales, a lot of people go for like Christmas collectibles and Halloween collectibles, me being one of those people. And then I have a bag of like some bigger stuff, some kitchen stuff. And over there is a bag of some smaller stuff. I think I have like some calculators. I have some Nubatag oven mitts and stuff like that. So we're gonna just quickly kind of go through this and talk some like pricing strategy, what I actually picked up for the garage sale versus maybe stuff I had already on Marketplace that I'm just pulling off to list. I'm sure you guys are getting really tired already of my voice and I apologize. There's kind of, again, no better way to do this. So this is an American Girl doll. She's from some like lower end line, but she is an official American Girl doll. I did 10 bucks on her. She was on Market, or she was on Mercari, but I am gonna try on the garage sale. This is a little rug that I paid by the pound because it's super lightweight. I put five on this. We have a really cute pear strainer. I put three bucks on this. This pink little Christmas tree. So this is kind of a holiday piece. This I actually had listed around Valentine's Day and it had like a hundred likes or saves or whatever on Marketplace and nobody would buy it. So now I'm gonna try to sell it for four bucks. I could almost literally save it for next Valentine's Day or so. Then I have a little lamp that I got from the bins. This I put four bucks on at the bins. I didn't pay by the pound for this. Electronics and stuff are a buck 60, I think. So I will be over doubling my money. Obviously with a garage sale, I'm not looking for like these, oop, the price fell off of it. I'm not looking for these huge, huge profit margins. I'm looking for a lot of these to sell and all these smaller numbers to add up to be a big number at the end. This is some like candelabra. I have this priced at four, but I need to find a sticker. And then I actually have some Pottery Barn pillowcases. I priced these at two bucks a piece. I think that's pretty fair. These are some more really cute pillowcases that I did two bucks a piece on. I think they're from like TJ Maxx. Another rug, and I always pay $2 a piece for rugs at the bins. This I put five on. It's a really nice like vintage wool rug. We have a like hand woven kind of circular rug that I put four on. As you can see, and it kind of pains me as a actual like professional like reseller, Poshmark seller or whatever, it pains me to double my money on stuff. I'm like, what's the point? But we'll see. This is my first try at this. It's all about the experience. It's all about learning together. It's all about seeing how much we actually make off of this stuff. This could be a total, total waste of my time, or it could be just a really interesting way to make a couple hundred bucks. That's kind of the whole point of this, I guess. We have a Corona sign, five bucks because it's in good shape except a couple scratches, but it sticks to your wall and it still has the stickers on the back. And I thought that that was cute to grab. That was actually on Marketplace at first. Here is like some sunken ship stories from, from Lake Superior, which is a lake that touches Minnesota. It's one of the Great Lakes. And then I have two of these pillows that are from Target. These are some Easter pillows. I put three bucks a piece on each of these. These are super light. I'm sure they cost me almost nothing, honestly. Next up, we're gonna kind of do the plushies and pillows. I think these are like my best friend when it comes to having a garage sale because you can list them about similar prices to these other things I've been showing you, but they are full of plush stuffing. So they cost me like nothing. First up for plushies and pillows, we have a Minecraft Creeper plushie. He's $3. He probably cost me around 75 cents at the bins. Squishmallows are the specific plushie that I really focused in on. Kind of like with hats, I focused in on Love Your Melons. With pillows and plushies, I focused in on Squishmallows. Five bucks. That's probably a great deal in the Squishmallow world. Probably seems high to you guys if you don't know Squishmallows, but they are just like wild. There are some like Squishmallow keychains that I see on Mercari that sell for like a hundred dollars. I don't know them that well. And so I might be being ripped off on some of my Squishmallows, but I don't really care. I just want to sell them. <laughs> Three bucks. This is some little like, what's his name? Pusheen. Pusheen. So I tried to grab, obviously as you can already tell, character plushies because they have more of a name behind them for people to actually buy. This is a Disney plushie for two bucks. That probably cost me like 50 cents. We've got a reversible Squishmallow. The medium ones like this, I did at five. So that one is also five. This is a little like squishable by Squishmallows. I put two on this. That probably cost me 50 cents at the most. SpongeBob. We've got more Squishmallows. This one's actually new with tags, but I still priced it at five. I probably could have done like six, 
or seven because it's new with tags, but I was like, whatever, I'll price them all the same. This is some expensive baby plushie brand called Jelly Cat. These are like 30 bucks. I put a dollar on it because it probably cost me like 25 cents. Some new with tag, like anime one, two bucks. I don't know. The plushies were kind of hard for me to figure out a price on, honestly. Three bucks for a small Squishmallow. We have like TikTok from Peter Pan movie. I put two bucks on him. We have a green Mickey for two. You can tell probably that I kind of priced, another Squishmallow for three, I kind of priced the plushies based on size. I don't really know how else, three for another medium one. I just felt like that was kind of the only way I could almost come up with my own little like mental algorithm on the pricing of the plushies is by size. And also, I mean, this size kind of has to do with how much I paid for them too. So I don't know, it kind of works out and that's just what I went with. I think all those will do really good and I could see myself ending up with no plushies by the end of this garage sale, honestly, because people love plushies and a lot of people don't like to sell them, but people freaking love plushies, especially licensed ones. So don't sleep on them, especially if you're having a garage sale. No, there's the freaking $4 sticker, the pink, tree stole it that freaking tree that tree better be sold i'm so sick of having it when was valentine's day like at least four months ago get this freaking tree i literally had it listed on marketplace okay we're talking about you come up here i had this thing listed on marketplace for valentine's day like i said for a good month before so actually i've had this for like five months again so many saves never sold and i kept marking the price down way low then i switched it to being called spring pink holiday tree. I kept getting more saves, no one bought it. Then I moved it to being an Easter tree. More and more saves and nobody bought it. So somebody better take this dang Barbie pink tree. I should list it again and call it like the official Barbie movie tree or something like that. I'll probably just get a bunch of saves and it won't sell. All right, so moving on to uh, another item that's missing its sticker. This is why I couldn't use the stickers on the freaking clothing. Also, if I'm getting like red and more and more kind of like moist over time, it is 90 degrees and I'm in an oven, basically. <laughs> this garage is so hot. Okay. <laughs> I've been in this garage for like, I think this is where we get, like the people who've lasted this long, you're okay with just like chit-chatting with me. Either you got bored and you left already or you're just here for like some chit-chat hours. So I've been in this freaking garage preparing for this garage sale for all, like all day, morning to now. And it's like 5 p.m. now. I've been in this garage since like 9 a.m., 10 a.m. I'm gonna go over this stuff more when I go over the third part of the video and I talk about the experience. But we've been so busy the past two weeks that today and yesterday were like the only days I've had to get ready for this garage sale. So yesterday I was pricing and sorting and finding. And today it's like the move it out in the garage day and sort it better based on like where it's gonna sit and kind of get like the displays and the setups ready. So I'm, oh, hot, hot and ready to <laughs> get this sale moving. Okay, so let's move on to the, I think the last group of miscellaneous and that is the holiday stuff. And I have a little bit more holiday than the stuff you're gonna see here because there's some like jack-o'-lantern plug-in lights that I have over in the corner that I guess you guys don't really need to see. You might be like, Jack, how dare you get rid of your like Halloween stuff? I can't believe you, I can't believe you've done this. Don't fret. The thing is at the bins, I save like rescue basically every single Halloween thing I find, especially light up jack-o'-lanterns. So I have a plethora. These are all light up jack-o'-lanterns that I'm keeping. There are some on the wall over here that you can't see. So don't worry. I have a lot of them. I made myself part with just a few of them because like, what better time? I would never redonate them because I don't want them to go to the dump. I'm selling a few, just so you know. In the vlog, if you see some pop up, yes, I'm selling a couple. First up, we have this Target Christmas tree, little like elm tree, or no, not elm, I'm losing it. Pine tree pillow, three bucks, I thought. Cute. This is a really nice like wool winter wreath, three bucks. 
It has like snowflakes and flowers on it. Thought that was cute. This little jack-o'-lantern guy is not really my de decor style. I think I had four bucks on him. I'm just gonna have to put a new price tag on him because it fell off, I guess. This is just a really nice, like reusable little pumpkin, like yarn straw, really nice, like gift bag. I put a buck on that. Again, I rescue like everything Halloween from the bins. We have some Halloween plushies. Again, I have a trillion of them. So I had to pick some to part with. I think I put three bucks on each of them. And there's also this one. They actually used to sit in my car, but I have too much stuff in my car now that I had to make room. Some. Universal Studios official like Frankenstein cups that I put a buck on each. From the bins, I found this cute little like Santa fence thing, three bucks. Um, I have some like Halloween napkins that I've just like collected over time. I think I put 50 cents on each. This like hanging ghost cutout I put two bucks on. Like spooky vintage black cat for a dollar. We have this Bed Bath & Beyond candle holder for three bucks. These can be super rare. And I've had that one listed on Mercari for quite a long time. I don't think it's rare, so it hasn't sold yet. So I'm just gonna put it in the garage sale. A lot of this, I'd say a good 50% of this. If it didn't sell, I would still keep it listed if I have it listed. Like I'm not just gonna go donate it or I don't know, I'll save it for something another garage sale someday. <laughs> these are some like fang ice trays, a dollar. I just got these at the bins. Again, me just like rescuing Halloween stuff. 50 cent little like Sherpa pumpkin from the bins. This was probably like a nickel. I got this like spider web pillow, two bucks. There's any part in this video where it seems like I just suddenly kind of like stop talking about something and it like cuts. It's because somebody's walking by the front of my house and I'm sitting here with bags of plushies around me and my iPhone on a tripod, and they definitely could hear me for a good, like, <laughs> couple of seconds before they could see me and before I noticed them and stopped talking. Uh, anyways, that's actually about it that I'm gonna show you, I think, today. Also, I just feel like we don't need to go through every single freaking thing. You're gonna see more of it during the vlog, which again is part two of the series, and that's gonna go up on Tuesday. I'm gonna be filming that the two days that I have the garage sale. And then the rest is kinda, I don't know, like, like I said, I have like some little calculators, scientific calculators, and I have like a paintball mask that I found at the bins, and I have some oven mitts that are new with tags and have some cute prints on them. Like just a bunch of just little miscellaneous new with tags, whatever cost me like under a quarter at the bins. Just little stuff I picked up over time. So you'll see more in the next part. I'm not gonna bore you with going through every single thing. None of this is like wildly exciting. Cause obviously if something had a ton of value, I would sell it myself. So a lot of this is just like little knickknack, new with tags or kind of cutesy things. Not things that are worth like a ton of money where someone's gonna come here and like arbitrage from me or else I would just sell it myself. So I'm gonna meet you guys back inside. I will also say I did get a pack of 32 bottles of water to put into a cooler and sell for like a buck a piece tomorrow when the sale starts because one of you commented and said that was an idea to use and that's a really, really good idea. So I am 100% doing that. That's such a good idea, especially when it's gonna be 90. I almost think I might need more water. What if the water bottles are what I make most of the money off? Possibly, it could be with 90 degrees and probably humid, it's possible. Okay, so I'm gonna meet you guys inside for a little outro to this video. And I hope that you found this a little informative. I tried my best. Once again, it's just, these things are too clunky and big and discombobulated to literally sit inside and do a regular like haul of. So I hope you're able to see this stuff and kind of get an idea and a picture of what I'm selling. But again, on Tuesday, you might get to see stuff better or you might get to see more of the stuff that you didn't see, including Debbie's stuff. So let's head back inside where it's a nice 70 degrees, 20 degree difference. I'll go in there with you now. Come on, let's go hurry, please, I'm dying. Okay, so we are back inside now and I am back to a nice 70 degrees versus like 92 and it's feeling much better in here though I'm still, I'm still feeling it. So, <laughs> so let's quick just break down some of the numbers and then I will finally let you guys go. This is as per usual, quite a rambly video. So I know you're probably getting bored of it and we're just gonna break the numbers down quick and I'm gonna let you guys go. So as for the clothing, as I said, I do have every single size and 
I will tell you how much pounds, pieces, and price I did per size. And we'll break down by accessories, bottoms, shoes, baby, and kids. Then I'll talk about the miscellaneous and let's just go through this really quick. So in the clothing, the extra small, I had five pieces of extra small clothing, two pounds worth of clothes. And at my bins, I paid $3.98 for my extra small clothing pieces. Small clothing, I had 22 pieces of clothing. That was 7.3 pounds of clothes. I paid $14.53 for that. Medium clothes, I had 23 pieces and that was 10 pounds and 45. I think it was a little bit more because there were some hoodies mixed in there and a couple like sweatshirts. That was $20.80 for the medium clothing pieces. The large clothing pieces, I had 10 of. That was 4.25 pounds, equaling $8.45 spent on large clothing. Extra large and beyond. I had 12 pieces of, and that was six pounds worth, so I paid $11.94. As for the bottoms, I did not count out the pieces because there's a lot in there. There's a lot of shorts, a lot of skirts, a lot of leggings, but I do know that it was 18.2 pounds. And so for the pants and the bottoms and the skirts and the shorts, I paid $36.28. As for the accessories, I did not count those either because there was quite a bit of pieces in there, but I do know that altogether it was 8.6 pounds and I paid $17.11 for the accessories accessories, which is the bras, some separate swim pieces, and some hats. Shoes, I have 12 pairs of shoes. They were all bins shoes, and they totaled 15 pounds, which is honestly pretty good. Kind of better than I thought, because some of those boots were pretty big. $29.85 spent on the boots, the shoes, the sandals, all that good stuff. Last for the clothing category was the baby and kids bin, and I did take out the weight of the bin, of course, when calculating this. I did not count the pieces in there. No way was I gonna do that. There's a lot of baby clothes in there. And that was 21.6 pounds. There was a lot of baby clothes. So I paid $42.98. The baby and kids clothes is actually what I've been collecting for the longest, so I'm not surprised that there's so much of it. And again, I'm hoping that my price of $3 or two for five does well. I'm assuming by Saturday I'll mark it down to $2 or two for three, but I think for the first day, hopefully I can sell some at that other price point. So as for clothing, all together. The clothing is $185.92 invested. And like I said, it is all bins clothing. So I don't think that that's too bad. I have such a good variety of like ages, like age range, like teen, tween, 20 type clothing with adult women's clothing with a couple men's pieces and baby and bottoms and shoes. So I think it's a good price for such a variety of stuff. That's about what I would spend in one and a half bins trip, maybe two bins trip if they weren't that big of trips, so that's not that bad. As for the other, the miscellaneous, the hard goods, and all that stuff, the holiday stuff, you pay straight up single, like piece by piece prices when it's a large piece or it's an electronic. So for the holiday, larger pieces or electronics, I paid $12. And for the other stuff for the holiday, like pillows, tabletop decor, I did pay by pound. It was 13 pounds of that stuff. And it was $25.87 for the holiday other stuff. So as for the holiday altogether, $37.87 invested into the holiday pieces. The plush and the pillows, we only had six pounds in that full TJ Maxx bag. So it was $11.94 for the plush and the pillows, etc which is just basically anything else. Like I said, calculators, paintball masks, oven mitts, napkins, just a bunch of other random things. We had $13 worth of rugs and bigger pillowcases because a lot of times I pay flat rate on bedding if it's like a set or if it's like multiple of the same pillowcase, I can pay like a dollar they'll sometimes sell it to me for. And then the rugs, like I said, out in the garage are about two bucks a piece usually. So altogether 13 bucks, the rugs and pillowcases 
cases. And then for the other et cetera miscellaneous, 25.2 pounds worth of stuff. It was $50.15. So all together for the et cetera or the miscellaneous, $63.15. And then I got a 32 pack of water for four bucks from Target, which totals $4. So all together for everything that I have in that garage combined, multiple, multiple bins trips over a couple months, I'm invested $302.88. So fingers freaking crossed. Like at least, at least $500 from the garage sale. Please, like that's like minimum of 500 is I guess what I'm like really, really, really hoping for. I know that some people make bank at garage sales and some people seem to not really like do anything. We luckily, our new house is on like a pretty busy street. I do have my garage sale signs. I still gotta go do those. And like I said, it's the night before the actual garage sale. So I'm gonna go do that. I will see you guys on Tuesday for part two, which again is the vlog. Debbie will be in that. Ryan will be in it a little bit as well, but he's going to Iowa very soon. And then I'll see you guys in a week on Thursday for I'm like losing it um for the for the conclusion and the like, was it wasn't worth it I'm like what am I doing I will see you any of those times let me know if you enjoyed this I'm sorry if I seem worn out I am <laughs> but I'll see you on Saturday with Ryan or sometime bye <laughs>